This is the only way for you to see that I'm wearing a Buffalo Sabres shirt if I do this without any neck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the Buffalo Sabres re-sign Jeff Skidder. Um, they agreed to an eight-year, uh, nine million average annual value contract extension announced Friday. This is Saturday um, evening as that I'm recording this. Now, Skinner was set to become an unrestricted free agent as of July 1st. His new 9 million uh, AAV makes him the 6th um, highest paid winger in the league. And according to the score here, um, the five other players ahead of him are number one, Patrick Kane of the Chicago Blackhawks at $10.5 million in 2014. Signed in 2014. Second is Ovechkin from the Capitals at $9.54 million, Signed in 2008. Third, Nikita Kucherov at Tampa Bay Lightning at 9.5, signed in 2018. Fourth, Jamie Benn of the Dallas Stars at 9.5, signed in 2016. And fifth, Mark Stone of the Vegas Golden Knights at 9.5 million, signed in 2019. Now, of course, Buffalo traded uh, Cliff Poo, uh, prospect Cliff Poo, and a second round draft pick uh, to the Hurricanes last summer. And um, the 27 year old went on a tear and he scored 40 goals for the first time. Um, in his career with the Sabres. Uh, he also ranks 10th in the NHL with 129 goals since the start of the 2015-16 season and has reached a 30-goal mark four times in his career. Uh, him and playmaking center Jack Eichel, of course, played that, uh, play the, that dynamic um, one-two punch uh, um, Buffalo's top line there. And this eight-year uh, contract extension um, takes the former Calder... Calder? I always get those two mixed up. One's the AHL trophy, one's the Rookie of the Year NHL trophy. Uh, in any case, um, this contract takes him through the age of 34. And um, in Sportsnet, uh, they, they were talking about how manager GM of the Sabres, Jason Botterill, acknowledged the risks um, involved in re-signing a 27-year-old forward to such a lucrative long-term contract, and yet he added a bigger gamble would have been losing the team's leading score once the um, NHL's free agency period opened on July 1st, um, and then having to, you know, uh, having to start from scratch and replace him. Understandable. And, yeah, 40 goal score. Those don't grow on trees, right? I, I see that. Now, um, let's just look at uh, hockey reference here for a second and Jeff Skinner's entire career and briefly look at his, his, his point pace here. Now, in 2010-11 when he started, when he won the uh, Calder, Calder uh, he had 31 goals and 63 points and he was a plus 3. Now, he only hit 63 points, that's the most he's ever had in his career, three times. Um, and in 2011 and 12, uh, he has 20 goals, he has and 44 points, and he's a minus eight. Um, then right after this, he signs uh, like a was it a six-year deal with Carolina, worth about uh, 5.73 million, I want to say um, AAV. And then 2012-13, uh, um, in only 42 games, mind you, he has 13 goals and 24 points and a minus 21. And that's when the, the plus minus starts to get um, become a bit of an issue with him. In 2013-14, the next year, he's got 33 goals. That's uh, the second time he hits over 30, 30 or over, excuse me, uh, with 54 points and a minus 14. Uh, in 2014-15, he has a really down year. He only has 18 goals, um, 31 points, for, and he's a minus 24. Ouchies. Uh, next year in 2015-16, he has a bit of a rebound, gets back up to 28 goals, too shy of 30, has 51 points, he's a minus 2. Better all-round season, you might say. In 2016-17, uh, he has 37 goals, almost 40, 63 points, that's the second time um, that he hits that many, and he is in his minus 3, not too bad. Uh, in 2017-18, his last year with the Carolina Hurricanes, um, he has 24 goals and uh, 49 points and is a minus 27. Yee. Uh, and then, of course, his in his last um, last season with Buffalo, his first with Buffalo, however you want to look at that, he has 40 goals, 63 points, um, 
ties the highest mark of points he's ever had in his career, breaks um, the highest goals he's ever had, and his plus even uh, plus minus is dead even at zero. His career plus minus, by the way, is minus a ninety six. So um, I also wanted to look at um, the NHL.com's goal scoring leaders list here, and I wanted to look at it because I wanted to see where he fell on the points per game. Um, in terms of the guys ahead of him and the guys behind him. So Jeff Skinner falls in, uh, according to NHL.com, at number 12 um, with you know with 40 goals. It's more like number 7, really, because of all the ties that are there. Uh, but in any case, at number 12 with 40 goals, and he's got .77 points per game. Um, and the, the next closest player that has less points per game than he does on this list is number 39 at Patrick Laine, um, who has a point six one points per game. Uh, and then after that, it's uh, Andreas Anastheo uh, from Detroit at point seven one. Uh, then Evander Kane at 41 uh, with point seven five, And then after that, it actually gets higher for quite some time. The exception of maybe Tyler Johnson with point five nine points per game. In any case, um, j- just to you know, paint you a little picture here. Now, uh, Buffalo isn't exactly the biggest destination for UFAs, you know, um, either. So to back the GM, he's kind of forced into a corner, really, to sign this guy for this amount of money. One might say, I mean, Buffalo is a great city and a great hockey town. But it isn't the biggest UFA draw, you know. I I, have, I can't. I look back and I can't think of any big UFA. But maybe Matt Molson. I think he was the biggest one ever, really. So, I mean, generally players don't want to go to places that don't have the best weather or slash smaller towns. One could say Winnipeg as well, or Calgary, Edmonton, even Toronto, um, you know, if we're just talking weather. So, that's to justify. I mean, those are all great hockey towns, but, I mean, who else is Bottle going to go after on the UFA market right now? Panarin? He's probably going to sign for just as much, um, even though he didn't score as many goals. I think he had more points, though. Um, but he, he's, let, he's basically let everyone know he's going somewhere with a beach, Right? Who's left? Zingle, Pavelski. Pavelski's probably going to resign with San Jose, um, and he's not going to resign with anyone else that, that, unless they're a contender. And who knows what Buffalo's going to be like next year? I mean, yeah, they were first at one point in the season, but I don't think anyone sees them as a contender next year. Maybe they're making the playoffs. Who knows? I mean, their new coach Ralph Kruger is uh, is a bit of a wild card, right? You know, in the in the World Cup. Um, was it uh, four or so years ago? He took team, um, was it Team Europe? You know, into the finals. Before then, you know, him and Edmonton uh, as a head coach, he didn't last that long. Who knows what's going to happen with Buffalo? They have some really, you know, some good players there. They should be doing better. Um, but they, they've also, you know, look, you look at their cap, right? And they, they've got, after the signing, they have just over $20 million in cap space. So, but, so you say, oh, yeah, they got plenty of room. But they, they've got to think of, uh, in, starting in 2021, they got to think of uh, Sam Reinhart, who's going to become an RFA. Um, they've got to think of Casey Middlestat as well in the same year. Um, that's just to name a couple uh, of, of the forwards. You look at some of the defensemen. Um, Rasmus Ristolainen is going to become a UFA in 2022-23. I know that's not for a while. Uh, then we look at Marco Scandella, UFA in 2020-21. Um, in the same year, there's Martin. Uh, there's Brandon Montour, who's going to become an RFA. He's going to have to get paid, um, get a bit of a pay hike there as well. Uh, then, of course, the big big fish being Rasmus Dallin, who in 2021-22 is going to become an RFA. So all that cap space could disappear really fast. And I guess my point is, 
it's 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 hard to argue with Jason Botterill at all on this one. Eh, couldn't they have tried to stretch to sign him for less? You know, it's you know maybe a seven year or even a six year at uh, between seven and a half and 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 eight and a half million dollars. You know, uh, I I mean, yeah, I I know there's that idea out there that. Oh well, it's not the player's problem that the team is, you know, where it is in terms of cap space and blah blah blah. And I still, I don't agree with that at all. I think the player's got to take some responsibility, um, especially in terms of, you know, d does he want to win a Stanley Cup? Does he want his team to contend? Then, in order to give your GM the most opportunity to, you know to go out and get to other UFAs or sign his existing RFAs to make that team as competitive as possible. Yeah, I think it's everyone's issue, really. I mean, the load lands on the GM's shoulders, but I think the players have to take some, definitely take some responsibility in this. And, you know, why not take eight million? What's the difference between the seven and a half or even eight million? I know it accumulates over the years, but still, you're making seven and a half million a year, eight million a year. What do you need? Maybe three or four luxury cars instead? I just, I know it's the reality in which the market works, but it, it just makes me wonder because it, it's, it just seems to be a cutthroat world and just take all the money you can and... Look, look at the teams who went to the Stanley Cup final in the Boston Bruins and the St. Louis Blues. They don't have a player over, I want to say, what, seven and a half million right now? It's part of the reason they are where they are. Good contracts, and um, and they're all the way there. And we can even step back further and, and look at some other teams. But I just... Uh, and, and you look at the division they're in. You know, look at Toronto, look at Boston, look at Tampa, look at F Florida. I mean, Florida's supposed to be doing much better with a the team they have, but they went out and finally got they got a really great coach in Quenville. He could turn ar around that team fast. And with a couple of other changes, you know, maybe they get better goaltending, maybe they scoop Panarin. There's going to be a lot of hard competition. You're going to need every little, bas little last little bit of, of money Um in order to make your team as competitive as possible. And, you know, I, you, know, you think at the round table with the GM and the player and his agent, you say, hey, you know, uh, do you want to win a cup? Do you, how successful do you want this team to be? How about eight million instead of nine? How about seven and a half? You know, you're still going to live a really, live a really great life. Yeah. I know um, a lot of people probably won't agree with me on that one, but I, I just thought I would be the, the devil's advocate, really. Um, it's not a terrible... I mean, he did score 40 goals, but it's only the first in his career, and at the end of that last two, three of the years, that contract may not look so nice. But, uh, yeah, in any case, I, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this. Um, I'm sure some of you have some, especially from you Buffalo fans... Um, out there. Hit like if you like this video. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And hey, if you happen to be um, or have any hockey geek friends, please don't feel shy about sharing. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.